So let's, let's watch the story. It comes from Luke 17. And then see how we're going to respond to Jesus. All right. Go ahead and hit it. <coughs> White here. This is it. White here. White here. This is what I used to stay. White here. All the time. All by myself. <laughs> With my friends. Adam, Benjamin, Caleb, Daniel, Ephraim, Frank, Gideon, Harold, me and Billy. There were ten of us in all. And no, we were not related. But we were closer than brothers. Especially me and Billy. I bet you don't know why. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because we were all sick. All sick. All outcast. <laughs> Nobody ever wanted to come see us. <laughs> Nobody was allowed to come see us either. Unless they bought the food. Every once in a while, they'd bring us a big basket full of food, and they'd leave it right over there by that gate. Right over there by that... By that gate, right over there. We were never allowed to go off past that gate either. <laughs> Not even to see our families. <sighs> Billy had a big family. Lots of brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins, 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 wandering around everywhere. But not me. Um, I just, um, I just had my mama. I sure do miss my mama. Oh, we got to yell back and forth across that gate and write, write letters every once in a while, but I never got to touch my mama. I never got to hug on my mama either. <laughs> The reason why is because if I touched her, she could get sick too. Leprosy is what they called it. Very contagious. That means you could get it real easy. And that's why we weren't allowed to go off and see our families. Because leprosy is not something you want your family to get. It makes your skin burn and itch and ache all over. You try not to scratch it, but the more you scratch it, the more it itches. The more it itches, the more you scratch it. And pretty soon... Things start falling off of you. Fingers fall off and toes fall off. Then it really starts to smell bad. Really bad. And no matter how long you stay in here, never get used to the smell of it. And pretty soon you get sick to your stomach and your back aches and your head aches and it itches, itches, itches. And then whole chunks of skin just fall right off of you. <gasps> Maybe that's why me and Billy were best friends. Because he had one good arm, and I had good, one good arm, and together we had two good arms. <laughs> Even though we had fingers and toes missing on the other ones. <laughs> and I remember one time, Adam's whole nose fell off. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> but at least he didn't have to smell this place like the rest of us did. Because this place stunk so so, so bad. You never got used to the smell of it. I guess because the only people ever allowed to come in here was people like us. With sickness, with leprosy and all that. And besides that, there's no plumbing in this whole colony either. But let me tell you the worst part. The worst part about leprosy is not the smell, but it does stink really, really bad. And the worst part is not the hurt of your body, but it burns and itches and aches all the time. The worst part about having leprosy is deeper. It's in here. It's being lonely. Missing your family and your friends. Knowing you'll never get to go see anybody. Because when you have leprosy, nobody wants to come near you. Because you look bad and you smell bad and you're missing parts. But my mom always used to say... Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> That's the outside part. She had it white. But when you have leprosy, nobody wants to look you in the face. Or nobody even wants to come and shake your hand. Or no one wants to even come and sit and listen to your problems. Because really, nobody cares. Nobody cares. I guess I don't really blame them about the shaking hands and touching part. But I sure did wish we could go off and see people every once in a while. Because really, the only people we ever got to see but besides each other was the priest. They're the ones we always had to show ourselves to, make sure we had enough food to eat, and ointment for our sores, and water, and... Oh yeah. Every once in a while, they'd let two or three of us go off and get water. But when we did, we had to cover up our whole self with a blanket and walk real slow and stay together. And whenever we saw somebody coming toward us, we had to yell at them. Like, go away! Unclean! Weapons! Stay away! 
<laughs> it's for their own good, really. <gasps> oh, yes, I remember one time Benjamin's brother came here to see us. Well, over there at the gate, and he yelled at us. But what he yelled at us was the beginning of hope for all of us. Because before that, we did not have any hope at all. No hope of getting better, no hope of leaving this place, no hope of seeing our family and our friends. You don't ever want to be in a place where there's no hope. It's ugly. I remember he yelled, Benjamin, I've met a man named Jesus. He claims to be the Son of God. He has the power to heal people. He's made the way to walk and the blind to see. Maybe you could go see him too. Yes, that sounded awesome because he wasn't just talking to Benjamin. He was talking to all of us. Adam, Benjamin, Caleb, Daniel, Ephraim, Frank, Gideon, Harold, me and Billy. He said, Ben, Benjamin, Jesus and his buddies are on their way down to Jerusalem. Maybe you could go see him. Maybe he can make you well too. Oh. <gasps> It. That was an awesome idea. It's me and Billy and Benjamin. But some of the others said, no, we can't go see him. What if we can't get close enough for him to heal us? Or what if we get too close to make him sick? Or what if he doesn't have the power to heal us at all? And you know what all those other people will say if they get too close to them. It'll make them mad. And Ephraim came forward and said, I know. I just don't feel good. I don't... I just don't think I can make it all the way there. Don't think you can make it. Come on, guys. We can make it if we just help each other out. Come on. Besides, it's the beginning of hope. Hope for all of us. So we decided to go after arguing and debating. Now, we didn't have a lot of time to argue and debate. But anything was better than staying here in this helpless, hopeless, smelly, sickness-filled leper colony. So we walked. And as we walked, we talked about Jesus. Just talked about Jesus. What he must look like. And if he was the son of God. And if he could heal us, what would we say when we saw him? We walked and we walked and we walked. And we helped each other walk. Till we came to the border between Samaria and Galilee. There was a small village outside there, far away from people, and we just stopped there and rested. We put ointment on our sores, comforted each other and got some water and just see if he would even show up at all. And suddenly, we saw a crowd of people, and they were coming toward us, and there was one man right in the middle. It was him. It had to be him, just like I knew it would be. And there we all were, far away from a distance. Adam, Benjamin, Caleb, Daniel, Ephraim, Frank, Gideon, Harold, me and Billy. So we started yelling from a distance, Master, over here! Jesus, right here, over here! Master, show pity on us! Jesus! Oh, that's when he stopped right there. And he turned and he looked right at us. Nobody ever looked right at us, but Jesus did. And then all of his friends got quiet all around him. And he raised his hand and he said, Go, show yourself to the priest. That's all he said. And all those people just pushed in around Jesus and followed him down that road toward Jerusalem. They left us all alone again. Adam, Ben, Caleb, Dan Dan the man. Ephraim, Frank, Gideon, Harold, me and Billy. Ephraim came forward. Harold again came forward and said, I know I shouldn't have come on this trip. It's too long. I, I just wish I could die right here. I said, I think we ought to go show ourselves to the priest. That's what he said do. So we started walking toward the priest. And we started feeling different. We started feeling stronger. We started feeling healthier. We started feeling better. Pretty soon, fingers started coming back out of our hands where they used to be. And they were healed. And Adam's nose came back on. <laughs> Look at you. Look at me. Look at my heart. Look at you. Yes. Look at me. <laughs> That's when I knew I had to go back and tell Jesus, thank you for healing somebody sick and unclean like me. So I ran with all my fingers and all my toes, yelling to the top of my lungs, go Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem. There was a big crowd of people, and I just pushed my way right through that crowd of people. And there he was. I threw myself at his feet, kissing his feet, and thanking God. Jesus said, were not all ten of you healed? Where are the other nine? And you're a Samaritan man. I don't know how he knew that, but he did. And then Jesus took his hands and he touched my face. Nobody ever touched my face. Not even my mama. But Jesus did. And then he said, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. I got tingly all over when he said that. But I don't think he meant well on the outside. Shoot. He already made us all, all well on the outside. I think Jesus meant in there. Jesus made me well on the inside. Oh, that's true power. <laughs> he doesn't care about you. I mean, how big you are, how little you are, how young or old you are, or what color you are on the outside. That doesn't matter. But if you believe, I mean, really believe, <laughs> Jesus wants to make you well too on the inside. <sighs> yep, that's it right there. That's it. Will you bow your heads? Pray with me.